Now this video I want to explain how to actually code this. I go under File, Save. Well that's an object. You can double click on it now. So I'll double click the word Save. It takes me directly to its coding window. All of this gobbledygook is what to happen when they press Save. I just have a message box. So I go here, I'll go to this example that's working. File, double click save, and you could see I typed message box, are you kidding me? I have no idea how to do this as the prompt, comma, message box style exclamation, and the title save. All of that is under this in between there. So when they click save, you get that message box. How to quit. Well, that's your first introduction to a variable. So up here, this example, I have dim. Dim stands for dimensional, one dimensional. Hi, mom is a variable as string because it can be it's going to be words that you answer so I'm declaring a variable so if I go into my new one exit right after public class form menu right there line number two dim the name of something make up a variable I will use for example Rivera my last name that's gonna represent a variable as string I hit enter it draws this gray line I'm declaring a variable I can use Rivera to mean something so here for when they click exit this is when they click save so I'll delete that here when they click exit if you see my demo you use your variable to equal your message box. So I'm going to copy this from my demo. And I'm going to type the word Rivera. It means something. Rivera equals and then paste. Message box. Are you sure you want to quit? Is your prompt. Comma. Now you pick message box style dot OK cancel comma and then the title of the message box exit and sub so whatever they click OK or cancel is to the computer it's stored as Rivera so now when I press play exit are you sure you want to quit here's the OK cancel they're not coded nothing happens there's the prompt and there's the title. So I want to code for when they click OK. And here's your first if statement. You've seen them before in Scratch. In my demo, if your variable equals VB OK, then end. Else, exit sub, end if. So you always, they're like blocks. If I use an if, I have to close it with an end if. That has to be at the end. If they click OK, then the program quits. You did that before. You used the word end. Else, which is like saying otherwise, exit sub. Just leave the routine, but keep running. So that's what I'm going to type in mine. If Rivera, because it's a variable, equals VBOK, then and notice it automatically put the end if for me because it knows it has to close if end quit the program else exit sub that way my cancel works if I don't click OK keep going is basically what it says if I click OK quit the program otherwise keep going that basically accounts for the, egg, the cancel if I hit cancel, that's not VB OK, so exit sub, just keep running. But if I do hit OK, then end, and the program quits. That's how you take care 
of the first top menu, save and exit, edit, how do I color, how do I take care of these colors? Well, what do you want to start with? I only have two choices. I'm only going to do black and blue. So if I'm going to start with black, I want to make sure black has a check mark. So I right click the word black, checked. So it's got the check mark. All these objects have properties here. If you want to actually change the colors or font, you can do all of that as well. I'm just going to keep that as, as it is, black. What to do if they click black? Well, double click. Ah, black tool strip menu item. All the coding here is if I press black. So what's the first thing I want to do? I want to change the colors black. Or they're already black because it's got the check mark. How do I change these shapes to black? Back color. I'll just pick black. There you go. I'll go over here, make this back color. Also black. I guess I forgot I needed a text box as well. Back color black. Now notice it didn't turn black. Back style. That's critical. I already did it on the rectangle. You have to say opaque so it actually turns black. So you might come across that problem. And my button's not black. So just these two. They're already black. So go edit colors. There we go. Double click again. Turn them black. SHP, the sh shape circle dot back color equals VB or color now color and find whatever it, whatever color you want I'm just going to use black the other shape my rectangle dot back color dot black oh. Typo. So it turns them black even though they're already black. What else do I need to do for that? Well, I need to make sure, in addition, I want to always make sure that black's got the check mark and blue does not. So the name of the item, black tool strip menu item dot checked equals true. It has a check mark and if blue was selected I have to make blue make sure blue is unchecked. Dot checked equals false. So because I have two colors I have four lines of coding. Change both shapes to black, put a check mark uh, by the word black and turn off the blue check mark. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for blue almost the exact same thing, same lines of code. Look what I do. You're going to do this a lot. Copy and paste. I'm going to copy, paste. This is for blue. Change everything to blue. Flip around the check marks. Now I want the black to be false, but I want the blue to be checked. And this should do it. No, because I have a typo. I type blue instead of true. There we go. I don't think I have any errors. Let's try this. Play. Edit. Colors. Black. Click on it. Everything already is black. Colors. Now watch. If I click blue, they both turn blue. And now look at the check marks. Blue's got the check mark. Check true. Black is checked false. This project consists of a lot of copying and pasting, and although I only had four because I was using two colors, you start having 5, 10, 15, 20 colors and other things that you can do. You could have 30 or 40 lines of code for each menu object. That's where the challenge is going to be. A lot of copying and paste and rearranging things. 
That should get you started in part two.